So these ideas, I open them up today as opening remarks because, you know, when you have your chance to go into expression sessions, that's your chance to let the emotions up, let your feelings up, and then as we come together, this is where we have to go into this so closely together, and when I say go into it, we're going to start to see more and more that you just don't have to identify with this ego belief system, because that's really where the difficulties are coming out, even though it gets played out in many, many, many different forms on the surface of consciousness. When we get down underneath, it gets much simpler as we start to go much, trace it inside. We start to see that the issue is still trying to hold on to some kind of ego belief system. And you won't find the happiness or joy or innocence in that belief system. And then also, I'm here also to just share examples of this because deep down, we know this to be true. We, we can resonate with these ideas of, of love and oneness, but we're here to make it a practical experience, not to just bring in a new theology to replace an old theology. We're here to actually have an actual experience of that love and innocence. So I just want to open it up. We've had a chance to have expression sessions today and bring some things up and and everyone's been telling me about some of the issues that came up in the groups, and we're certainly happy to talk about those too. Does anybody have any introductory questions? Yes? This is something that's sort of been, it's not personal, but it's a belief that I need to dig up. Um, okay with that. Um, so in the course, it says that we signed, it uses a metaphor of a contract with the ego. Okay. As in to explain all the suffering in the world. Which is cool. But when I take that and I think about like babies who get raped at the age of one and people starving in Africa and all these terrible, or seemingly terrible things, then I find a big disconnect in terms of being able to feel that as chosen. Because obviously ultimately it is, but I, I struggle with that a lot. And so because of that struggle, in me it brings up the, or excuses the desire to try and fix, try and rewrite the script. Um, yeah, so I wanted to bring that up. Yes. Well, the things that we would judge like horrific, like you're sharing, you know, it, it actually comes to the point where we have to start to, you, I know when I was working with the Course, I kept staying with it, staying with it, and it's like the Spirit, Jesus was just saying, stay with me, follow me, follow me, just try to hang with me as we go deeper and deeper in. But what it came down to me was, was beginning to begin to be convinced that that the feelings I was feeling were coming from what was going on in my consciousness and not from anything in the world. Like, there's the perceived world, but there's always my interpretation of the world. And um, some of the things you were describing, where the, the feelings get all stirred up, and where it can get quite intense and emotional, is still like I was saying, this interpretation of mistreatment, saying kickboxing, and I, don't know, I can't keep track of all the different categories of competition and fighting that's going on now. But, you know, there's a whole leagues developed and where people just go around, and that's what they do for thrills, just watch bodies pound on each other. Uh, and then we have more civilized versions, you know, football or cricket, and. I was talking recently on one of my movie clips about uh, the Stanley Cup with hockey. And the team, one team was behind, it was favored to win, and so the announcers say, they gotta come out and knock him, really hit him, crack him, you know, they were just, <laughs> the announcers were encouraging the players to really get vicious, to get back <coughs> into the, the series, you know. It's just a bizarre world, and, and yet, some of those things we can see are sanctioned, and acceptable by society standards, and you can even bet on them, and wager on them, and you can 
buy tickets ringside and get close seats to watch them up close and so forth. And other things seem to be just like happening and it's, it's just like a crime to watch them happen where like, like you said, a one-year-old getting raped or children being mistreated, animal mistreatment, you know, it, it comes in so many different forms. And yet, we have to bring it back to perception and say, you know, what if it's my consciousness that has the problem? And what if my distorted consciousness is, is where these intense emotions and these wild perceptions are all coming from? And that's, the, that's a big switch right there. I just wanted to share something about that. Um, uh, one time I was flying from the States to, to Europe and throughout the flight there was, seemed to be a, a child that was mistreated. It was a little one year old or something and the parents were kind of throwing the little girl between them and she was screaming very loud almost all the eight hours and, um, and I was practicing intensely with seeing this as my my interpretation, you know, how this felt in me, and I, I kept at it, and I kept lifting this, this uh, scene up in, to the light, and uh, my own uh, reaction, my own uncomfortableness with seeing this. And uh, at the end, when we stepped off the plane, the little girl, her eyes, we just locked eyes and joined, and it was so beautiful. And the mother said thank you to me, <laughs> and and I was not even I had not interacted with them. I had not said anything. It was just this kind of reinterpretation or retranslation of of that. Um, and then another time up in Canada, I was sitting by the lake, and there was a family out in three different boats and children and the parents and it was a very young child uh, screaming, crying in one of the boats and the whole thing was just beautiful. I had this experience that it was one, it, was, it wasn't a pain. <clears throat> I knew my past self would, would have heard, you know, a painful cry for mommy or, you know, but in my experience, it was just one. There was no, there was no, you know, sad baby. It was just beautiful experience of everything was one. Yeah. I think, you know, when, when we think it's out there, when we think there is a problem out there, it's, just a um, signal that we have been afraid. We we didn't want to to look at it, you know, to look at the belief in separation from God, which is the only suffering there can ever be. I, myself, I had. I thought I was abused. I thought I was, when I was a baby, and and I I faced those thoughts, and um, I even saw the scenes in the regression therapy, and, and um, forgave the person I thought was the abuser, and and told, even told him it, it never happened, and and we joined in the laughter, and you know, it was. It's just absurd with, with all the addiction to stories and pain. It's, it's nothing in there, really, in the past. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's a teaching that it takes a lot of mind training and practice to start to see that pain is a false perception. And it's, that's really what the spiritual journey is. It's allowing your mind to be convinced of a new interpretation. And before you can be convinced of a new interpretation and, and embrace a new interpretation of the world, you have to go through these phases where you start to 
see that there is still an underlying desire or want to be right about the fragmented perception. Um, you know, if you look at cases that come before courts of law, there's, there's vehement, very strong cases that are presented for and against you know, because there's going to be a judgment by a jury or by a, a judge of guilt and innocence. And it's like, you know, fighting to put forth a case. Or, or a lot of us know of divorce cases, you know, where it just gets into this venomous, knockdown, drag out kind of right, wrong thing. Uh, it's all based on winning a case or losing the case, and it's all based on distribution of wealth and resources and financial things, but in the end, you know, to be able to pull back far enough and become just so disidentified from the thoughts and from the world, to reach that place of innocence that's within you, that's very, very important if you want peace of mind, to come deep inside to that place that's, that's beyond it. And actually, when you get inside and you become identified with, with this stillness, this peace, then everything in the world is, is just something to be observed without any kind of judgment one way or the other. You just don't have a judgment about it. When you were talking about the child, you know, on the airplane being tossed, it reminded me of, recently I mentioned when we went to China, and we were in China, and we were flying towards Shanghai from, I think it was Beijing. And the, I think the captain came on and on the intercom, and it's the first time I've been in a plane where I heard the word diverted. The plane has been diverted. So I kind of leaned over to Francis and I said, well, it's for no, it was, I think I was with Albert. <laughs> he was sitting next to me and I said, diverted. When the plane is in the air and it gets diverted, in the course, some people would say that could be a hijacking, or it could be a shift of course, or whatever, this and that. And we were diverted to, was it? Nimbo. Uh, we, this smaller city outside of Shanghai, we went there. And we were in a waiting area like this, and a lot of the people on this flight were people that were businessmen, businesswomen, trying to get to Shanghai for important appointments and so on and so forth. They were just furious. They were just irate, they were raging. And we sat there and watched groups of the, a group of them go to the, to the attendant for the airline, for the airline representative, and just scream, and scream, and scream, a whole mob of them, at the airline atten attendant that was behind the desk, as she tried to politely explain, we're trying to do the best we can, we'll see if we can get another flight as soon as possible, and this and this, but they just, was an angry mob screaming at her, and I kind of watched from a distance and watched her shoulders kind of go down, and her body language just, she started to just kind of shrivel up as they kept just screaming, screaming, screaming. And then, um, I just felt this deep love and connection with spirit throughout the whole scene as I was watching it, finally I, this guy had to get up and just go walk in the middle of the mob and just, I was a little taller than everyone else there, so I, I was just kind of like, ah, I don't, ah, I'm just screaming. And I was, but, you know, I, I could be the eye of the storm. I could just walk in the middle of the mob and just look around and observe while they were watching me <laughs> go, you know, you, you don't see it as real. You don't have any fear or concern about it, but you, your whole point is to be the stillness, be the demonstration of the peace. And that's what that opportunity was. But it takes a lot of practice. And the reason it seems difficult is just because of ego investments. If you are invested with a stance, a pro or a con, if you're for something or against something in the world, where you're identified with an identity that seems to be threatened a personal identity that seems to be threatened by something that's happening, then that's where the, the emotions arise. That's where the, the defensiveness arise. That's where you can feel offended. So the detachment does come from practicing with the Holy Spirit and using these countless situations that we have in daily life to, to practice 
And that's really what the workbook of A Course in Miracles is designed to do. It's designed to retrain your mind, to turn you from upside down perception to right side up. Turn, turn the whole perception of the world right side up. To see everything right minded instead of from this egoic perspective. But it does take practice. We're always talking about that. Thank <laughs> you.